How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday on the show, and you know what that means? We've got a very big day today. For just the second time in the show's history, AEW President Tony Khan will be appearing live on Dynamite. With a big announcement set to be revealed on tonight's Dynamite episode, Khan told SiriusXM's Busted Open Radio today he'll be coming out to the ring and delivering the news himself. Khan noted he will only appear on Dynamite under the most important circumstances. We've done 126 episodes so far. This is only going to be the second time I've ever gone out to the ring to talk on the show, he said. First time was obviously very different circumstances, the Brody Lee tribute show. It's only under the most important circumstances I'll go out there. This is a very different circumstance, a more joyous occasion, certainly, and I'm really looking forward to it this time. He said, I think it's going to be a massive thing. People are going to get really excited about it. I'm excited about it. Just talking about it, he said. Tonight's Dynamite hopefully will be one that people remember for a long time. It's great to get a lot of eyeballs on the show ahead of this huge pay-per-view on Sunday. He said last week, the announcement isn't just about one piece of talent, but rather something that's going to be, quote, very important in the wrestling business. What's the announcement, everybody? I don't know, but there have been a lot of rumors about it today. And I'm going to talk about those rumors after the break. We've also got the full lineup for the Dynamite show coming up tonight. Update on what happened with Kane Velasquez. Update on Amari Miller was stretchered out after a match at NXT 2.0 last night. Scott Hall, raw ratings from this past Monday night going head-to-head with a ton of news out there in the real world and uh, more. So we'll get into that when we come back from the break. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Should mention uh, a couple of things before we go any further. One of those is that uh, AEW is doing their first ever music live show, the venue at UCF, Saturday, March 5th. That's this coming Saturday. Doors open at 8, show begins at 8.30. And uh, tickets available, awtix.com. Wrestle and Flow, Mikey Ruckus, and Montezzi involved. And Montezzi will be our special guest in the final segment of the show here today to talk about that and a lot more. So get ready for that, everybody. So what's the big announcement? I don't know. All I've had for days, people ask me, what's the big announcement? Dude, I don't know, okay? But I can tell you. All of the different rumors that I have heard and what I believe, this is what I believe the announcement is going to be, okay? I believe that AEW has made a deal with HBO Max, all right? May not have happened, okay? But I've heard from multiple people who believe that is the case. Internally within WWE, that's what they believe the announcement is that there is a deal with AEW and HBO Max. Now, something that I have noticed is that... um, You ever heard of the game of Telephone? Where uh, you have a big circle of people. I haven't played this game since I was like three. But there's a big group of people, and so I would say to Mike, uh, Montezzi is going to be the guest on the show today. And then Mike has to tell the next person, Montezzi is going to be the guest on the show. And then the next person goes... Um, there's like going to be an easy guest on the show here today. Then the next person goes, uh, there's going to be an easy, an easy guest on the show. Maybe filthy. He's easy. And then, you know, by the time it get back to me, it's like, you know, filthy's easy. I'm like what? That's creepy. But anyway, sometimes I think that when these, uh, these rumors start, it's like somebody comes up with an idea and then they tell somebody else the idea And then that person tells somebody else the idea. And then that person believes that that's actually, like, the idea. And then, you know, by the time it gets back to whoever, you've got whatever. So there may be nothing to this HBO Max story. But within WWE, they believe that AEW has made a deal with HBO Max. That's number one. Uh, There's also uh, the belief that AEW and uh, they have have, uh, purchased some tape libraries, okay? Uh, the rumored tape libraries are Ring of Honor 
And uh, and as Andrew Zarian noted, a non-New Japan Japanese wrestling company. Who could that be? Uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro? Noah? I have absolutely no idea. All of this also could be much ado about nothing. So I believe Tony Khan did a, a, uh, a conference call or something today, and he was asked about the idea of a, a streaming deal. And uh, suffice to say, he did not shoot it down. Said it'd be a great idea. Said it'd be, it'd be great. So, I mean, I think, I believe that the announcement is probably going to be something involving HBO Max and some video libraries. And obviously, if they bought the the Ring of Honor video library, they would have the footage for all in. And of course, if, if AEW were doing their own streaming sort of service, like with WWE and Peacock, obviously you want the genesis of the promotion there. So we'll see what happens tonight. I mean, Tony Khan is coming out to deliver the news. So whatever it is, he feels like it's a, a really, really big deal. I've heard other rumors as well. Everyone's heard, oh, maybe it's going to be an AEW New Japan Super Show. I don't think that's the announcement. I don't think that's big enough for Tony Khan to come out on TV and, and talk about it. I had people, you know, speculating, oh, maybe he bought Ring of Honor outright and Cody's going to go there as the booker. I don't think that's happening. I don't know. I don't think that's happening. That, to me, was was one of those things that was like, it started out as speculation, and people were thinking, hey, maybe this is what happened. And then so many people told so many other people that all of a sudden it's like on Reddit is that's going to be the news. I don't think that's the news. But I want to make abundantly clear, I don't know what the announcement is going to be. I'm just piecing everything together that has been rumored throughout the wrestling business, whether it's with WWE or wherever. That is, uh, that's my speculation as to what it's going to be tonight. What are all the journalists saying? What have they reported on? What have they been able to uncover? Anything in this? No, because I mean, nobody's talking. I mean, I've mentioned this a thousand times. But everybody's talking. But Brian, well, they're the talking, but here's is, the deal. It's been, yeah. Here's God. the deal. Everybody has NDAs, so nobody's nobody's going to say anything. I mean, I, I listen. I've never actually asked. I don't know what the NDA situation is in terms of like booking AW, but I never hear anything before it happens. I only hear about it after it happened. So the people that know, I would bet you dollar to donuts they've all signed NDAs. They can't talk. They can, I'm sure, talk after the announcement tonight, but nobody has said anything going in. Okay, I'm just ready to get it over with. This t- stuff has been going on for so long, and what, what's the big announcement going to be? And everybody's bantering about super shows, and is, is Cody, does this whole thing a swerve? Did they buy Ring of Honor and all all this stuff? I just want to get it over with. You know, I've heard for a long time that it's going to be something having to do with a streaming service. Now, whether that meant on their own, whether that meant with HBO Max, whether that meant something other with the Time Warner Library, obviously Bleacher Report. I don't know if it's, I don't even know if it still exists anymore, but it certainly probably didn't do what they wanted it to do, but they didn't have anything to put on there yet. If they're going to Time Warner and, and everybody involved there is going to do a sports arm on HBO Max, which would make perfect sense. If, if they were to do something like that, AEW being on there would be great. One of the things with the Ring of Honor tape library, because that has come up a lot over the last couple of weeks. In that case, what does this now mean for Ring of Honor? You know, and there's a lot of things, again, we got to hear what the announcement is, but that's something that people are saying, well, man, maybe he bought the library. Oh, man, maybe. Okay, well, if he bought the library and if he bought the company outright, I mean, maybe we would not. I don't think he bought the company. Well, that's the whole thing is something tells me we would have heard something about that because Sinclair's got certain channels that they would have to go through. But if they bought just the library... What then does that mean for Ring of Honor? What does that mean for Sinclair? What do they now have? What do they have at their disposal now? What what weapon does Ring of Honor have? Their whole history would be sold to AEW. I mean, cert- certainly talk about starting new in that case. But then again, then why do you want to be Ring of Honor then? Why not just start new with a whole new name and, and all that other stuff? So, And they're not doing that, obviously, because they've signed what? It's going to be Swerve and... Alex Zane, I think they signed for Ring of Honor just yesterday to be in Texas at WrestleMania weekend. So 
I'm just ready to get the whole thing over with. There has been all this conjecture. I'm so sick of like, well, do you know? Uh, have you heard anything? I don't know anything. He he. Let's just get this thing over with and, and get it done. And one thing for anybody out there who's younger that wants to try to punch a hole in things, obviously, when it comes to, you know, reporting on these stories and digging into them and trying to get sources, there's obviously a hole you can punch through because nothing has come out clearly about this and everybody's playing a hot potato with it. So... You know, for you kids out there looking to get into this thing, start grinding away. There's a there's a hole to be filled for sure. A hole to be filled to work your way through NDAs. I'll believe it when I sure, see it. Sure, sure, sure. You got the no NDAs, and you have proof of all the NDAs, correct? Well, I know people have told me they can't talk because of an NDA. So mm. that's it. Okay. That's what happens. Okay. Do you have proof of the NDA that they're saying, or are they just saying that you're taking it to work? What are you trying to get at here, I don't Mike? know, because you like, just keep burying me, able... like you're throwing me, like, well, if people can work their way through NDAs, I mean, I'm not burying no, you at all. I'm saying nobody is talking. Reporting on this story and trying to bust through. That's all I said. Oh, I hope they people can work their way through NDAs. I'm sorry you don't know, dude. Okay? I, well, my apologies to you. You go work your way through the NDA and then tell me what the announcement is by the end of the show here. Well, why don't you have apparently the NDA, it's easy. Since you keep talking about NDAs, so why don't you like break them out for me then? What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Brian? You're angry that no reporter has found out what the story is yet. All I said was, because of the way it's been reported, you started the show with, what's it going to be? Obviously, there's a hole for people to punch through to get sources and try to report on things. That's the only thing I'm saying. Well, those people can work their way through NDAs. Yeah, I guess they'll have to, Brian, and they'll have to get sources to try to work their way through it and to try to report on this big story that nobody's been able to report about. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Moving on to horrible news. A new report indicates Cain Velazquez shot at a man who was recently charged with molesting a close relative. The Mercury News reported Tuesday evening Velazquez allegedly shot and injured the stepfather of Harry Eugene Goulart, 43. Goulart has been charged with molesting Velazquez's relative at a home daycare in San Martin, California, that is run by Goulart's mother. Goulart was arranged last Friday. Uh, arranged. Uh, arranged. Anyway, one felony can of lewd and less. You know what it is. A child under the age of 14, Judge granted Galarte a supervised release despite objections from the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office. At around 3.15 Monday, Velasquez then allegedly opened fire at a car carrying Galarte, his stepfather, and at least one other person. The stepfather was hit once and is expected to survive. Velasquez was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. He is currently being held at the Santa Clara County Main Jail, being held without bail. So uh, somebody in the chat here uh, said that there is a update on what he has been charged with, which I'm going to try to find right now. But uh, it's not good. No, and, and I... <sighs> I think it's this case carries 15 to life uh, as it was initially reported. Hopefully, under the circumstances of what's been reported, maybe this can be pleaded down to involuntary attempted manslaughter. I don't know exactly what the terminology would be here, but, um, I don't, you know, you, 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 it's hard to blame them, but. The reason that you can't do something like this is even if this person is dead to rights, they have not gone through with the trial yet. He goes and he takes a shot, doesn't even hit the person, hits somebody else. If he goes to jail, his child, this child, whoever this is, and it obviously seems to be his child, then what? Then that person's out. Your father's in, in prison. I believe me, I, I've got a kid and I, 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 I completely understand, but that is why you have to wait, unfortunately, and you have to, you cannot have justice and take justice into your own hands because sometimes it backfires and it can do you and the person that you are trying to redeem and trying to protect 
it, it can backfire on, on everybody. So my best to Cain Velasquez, I don't blame him. I hope under the circumstances this thing can be pleaded down for his sake because for him to do 15 years for this, boy, I, I, I hope that's not the case. All right, this is more from uh, TMZ. Cain Velasquez allegedly rammed his truck into the car of a man accused of molesting UFC legend's family member, allegedly fired multiple shots in the man's vehicle, striking the stepfather. Uh, Velasquez followed uh, Gularte, along with his mom and stepdad, from their home on Monday afternoon. Velasquez, who was driving a black Ford F-250, then allegedly began shooting into the Chevy Silverado driven by the stepdad. Authorities say Kane caught up to the car and rammed it before eventually firing off more shots. Cops were called. Velasquez left the scene. Soon after, cops located Kane on the road, pulled him over, and took him into custody without issue. Police found a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun in his truck. Uh, they also know they found two 10-bullet magazines in the vehicle. Eight bullets were missing. Kane has been hit with 10 charges. First-degree attempted murder, multiple accounts of assault with a deadly weapon, shooting an occupied motor vehicle, among others. If he is ultimately convicted, Kane is facing decades in prison. And uh, there was a line somewhere I saw elsewhere from the DA that essentially said, you cannot take the law into your own hands, which is uh, what happened here. Mm -hmm. So obviously everyone in MMA is rallying around Kane. And uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I don't think he's getting away with, I mean, he's going to no, see some time. To, yeah, they're going to have to do something because of the recklessness of it. It's not like he broke into this guy's house, had him cornered and, and did something. I mean, this is out in the public. This is out on the street. Again, it's all these emotions that take over and all of them understandable, but unfortunately be again how everything is played out here is the reason that you don't do something like this and you have to unfortunately yeah I, I i can't imagine it must kill you but you have to try to wait and then see where you can take your justice if you don't happen to get it in the courtroom i've not seen all of nxt 2.0 but i did see the amari miller lash legend match so uh, they had a match, and uh, it was not very good because they're both very green. And uh, whoever put the match together... Actually, I, the issue isn't even so much the way the match was put together, but uh, they have given Lash Legend a finish that she should not be using, okay? The uh, finish is essentially uh, the AA, but you toss them the other direction. So the normal AA is just like a Death Valley driver... The person taking the move just goes forward. They land on their back, uh, and that is that. This is the opposite. This is uh, you get them on the shoulders, their head flies over, and then they have to take a, uh, a bump. And uh, I hate this bump because you have no control over the bump, and uh, you have to completely rely on the person doing the move. It's like a tree slam, and uh, I hate that move too. So uh, this one here... Uh, Lash Legend does the move, and I presume, and it was hard to tell because uh, Lash Legend fell on her after doing the move, but I believe that Amari Miller smashed her uh, head into the mat, and then Lash fell on her, and then uh, pinned her, and then they had to uh, stretch her, Amari Miller, out of the building. And uh, the word I got last night was, uh, for a while, she couldn't feel her neck and arms, which is not good. And uh, they took her to the hospital. And the word this morning is it appears she only has a concussion. So uh, she's tweeted since. She says it's uh, something like it's a roadblock. We'll be, we'll be back in action soon or something like that. But uh, there's a big problem on the show. I don't know if you guys have noticed or not. But uh, there's a lot of green wrestlers. When I was coming up, the term was the blind leading the blind. And uh, uh, that's not good. And you know what? When I was coming up and it was the blind leading the blind, it was the blind leading the blind on an indie show at the B&I Marketplace in Tacoma in front of like 30 people. Uh, this is the blind leading the blind on national television. And uh, they're doing moves they should not be doing. They're uh, these, I mean, God... I haven't seen the, uh, apparently Duke Hudson almost killed somebody on the show, too. I haven't seen that one. But uh, same sort of deal. 
Uh, I don't know if it was this show, but I saw the footage of it. It was last week's. It was the kid. Uh, who's the? Oh, not Cambodian. Um, oh, that one. Yes, where yeah, that he, guy almost got killed. Yeah, he went up way high. Obviously, he didn't tuck his chin, but there's almost nothing. I mean, you're going to bounce from that height, and he just was. Lance is going to end up talking about this a lot when you guys do a show because I know he tweeted it out in response to, in response to this dude hyping up his move, but. They make a lot of questionable decisions. I mean, Lash and Amari Miller, everybody falling over themselves about Nikita Lyons last week. And this is nothing. Again, I'm not saying she looked terrible or anything like that. But, like, shave X amount of time off that match. And how much better would it have been? Was it really a, a, that big of a showcase for her? They should have cut that down to, like, a minute. And then had her come out this week and destroy somebody in another minute. Uh, I, you know, they they have made some really bizarre decisions when it comes to focusing and showcasing some of their people. They've been very lucky with Tony D'Angelo. They have been, obviously, Braun Breaker was a, a, a no-question star anyway. And I think they may get a lot luckier than we believe with Tiffany Stratton. But with all that said, they've made some bizarre decisions. Tiffany Stratton and Saray, that could end up being something as well, too, because, again, this is a, a clash in styles and the whole nine yards that I, again, you're trying to get over Tiffany Stratton. I don't know if Saray is the right one I'd want her in there with right now. The issue with all of this is... Uh... When I when I used to see these blind leading the blind matches, I mean, they were horrible. But uh, the other issue is that when you work with a green person on an indie show, you idiot-proof the match. You don't do anything dangerous. You, you, you just keep it as simple and basic as possible. But you know what? When a show is live on national television, apparently their feeling is you can't idiot-proof and do stupid, simple matches. You've got to have them do stuff. And I've seen these dives... I saw, you know, I don't want to make fun of Amari Miller's moonsault because she got hurt, but it was not a good moonsault. No, and, but that's uh, the thing. That's well, hold the on. Problem. So Go the ahead. issue is these these people are not capable of doing these matches. Like the analogy would be as a gymnastics coach, if I, you know, I'm going to take somebody who has never done gymnastics and uh, I'm tasked with having them do a floor routine on national television in uh, in a year and. You know, well, they can't do anything. I mean, they could do a forward roll and a cartwheel and some stuff like that. But, man, it's going to be national television, so I'm going to make them do a, a, a double back. Ain't going to happen. They're going to kill themselves. That's what we're watching on this show. It's, it's It blows me away. It really does. And it's one thing when it's somebody in there with Pete Dunne or somebody that's in there with – even Andre Chase and Von Wagner, I mean, Chase has been around for so long and they had the type of match that, you know, it made a lot more sense than Amari and, and Lash. And we've seen this with Lash now several times. This is a person, God bless her, she should not be on TV and all you're doing is killing her progress by doing what you're doing with her. We're back in a moment with Montezzi, Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Wouldn't be Observer Live if we didn't have issues. Having a problem connecting to Montezzi here. I saw him for like two seconds, and then he vanished off the face of the earth due to a bad connection. So uh, if we can't make this thing work, we'll do it tomorrow, everybody. But I'm working We're going to have him on. There's a lot to talk about with him. Got the whole AEW deal. His relationship with Swerve, Shane Strickland, lots of lots oh, of different things. To talk Montezzi, about. you there? Oh man, I see him. I we see him, but I don't hear him. Of him. <laughs> oh, holy smokes! Uh, I'm not sure we can get his video up here either. Can we get his video up, or what's going on? We got a new producer here on Wednesdays. Oh, that's right. It's Wednesday. If it doesn't work, we're going to uh, figure this out. Yeah, I don't know where it is either. <laughs> ah, well. Yeah, right. Hold on a second. I'm going to figure this out. We're still not talking about NXT if this doesn't happen. Did you watch it? I did. We'll talk I'm about glad it. You, I'm glad you didn't. Talk about it while I can uh, talk to Montezzi here. Ugh. Well, the Indy Hartwell Persia Parada story continues on with their men. Yes, Persia Parada and Indy ended up losing to Dakota Kai and Wendy Chu in the Dusty Rhodes Classic. But that's only a 
It's only a side story. The whole Dusty Rhodes classic is just a side story to the real things that are taking place in relationships with these two teams. With Indy and Parada, in Persia Parada, it's this bizarre thing where Persia's with, with Duke Hudson, and Duke used to be with Indy, and he's kind of baiting at her to, you know, we could do this again, and Indy is so disgusted, and Dexter Loomis walked away upset, didn't even defend his woman didn't defend himself last week, just walked away, just got cucked out of the locker room, put his head down, walked away. Indy's still looking for him, you know, uh, amazingly. And just uh, this is a side note, too, just a small thing for me. There was a segment where Persia Brada was on the phone, and Indy's trying to get her to go for a match. And then she goes back to the locker, opens it up, and she gets back on her phone again. And she's like, come on. So she puts it back in. It's like there's no lock on the locker. I was waiting for somebody to come in and, like, take the phone, like, do cuts and do something slimy or something like that. No, no, she just left it there. They went to commercial. But bottom line is Dakota Kai and Wendy Chu beat her uh, in Indian Persia. So Kai and Chu are obviously members of this team and have no idea why they're teaming with each other. Chu decided to to take Dakota on as a partner so she could have one into this tag team competition. Unfortunately, it has not worked out for the best, uh, really, as far as their relationship goes. Dakota keeps talking to an invisible person. Yeah, so that's NXT. So then Lash Legend Amari Miller came after that. Gunther, the former Walter, defeated Solo Sokoa. So even though Solo Sokoa laid him out last week, Walter ended up taking the victory. Harlan defeated Draco Anthony. And uh, <laughs> so Harlan, by the way, picked Draco Anthony up after the match and kind of gave him a hug at the behest of Joe Gacy. So I don't know if Joe Gacy is going to continue to try to get Draco Anthony underneath their umbrella. If they try to strong arm him, strong arm him into joining, whether he joins on his own. But that was that. Then we got Ulyssa Leone and Valentina Faraz against Raquel Gonzalez and Cora Jade in the other Dusty Rhodes first round matchup. Uh, <laughs> Gonzalez and Jade ended up winning the match. Uh, so she got a hot tag. Gonzalez did came in cleared house one arm power bomb gonzalez slammed jade onto leon and got the uh she ended up taking the technically getting the victory there when gonzalez dropped her on top of her so she ended up taking the victory then that's when we got the tiffany stratton saray uh dust up backstage which again tiffany stratton's got <laughs> i guess she's look she's got the gymnast deal she's got all the tumbling all those that background which is very good for pro wrestling got a fantastic look got a ton of confidence that you can't teach and that's awesome she also might get her teeth knocked down her throat by saray accidentally <laughs> you know because we've seen it already before uh so it's an interesting matchup this isn't one where if i needed stratton as brian was talking about to be led along in a match i don't know if i want it to be saray saray doesn't work the way they want her to work yet she's been trying to do that she still works like she's in japan sometimes uh which can lead to again some stiff shots here but Again, an interesting decision to make. Then we got Von Wagner and Andre Chase, which led into the main event of Carmelo Hayes and Pete Dunne, which was no surprise other than the tag match that opened the show between the Dirty Dogs and Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, this was by far the best thing on the show. Carmelo Hayes retains the title uh, with Trick Williams at his side. So after the match Hayes did say he's taking his talents to Dallas much in the same way LeBron James still playing off of that taking my talents to Long Beach uh, or to, 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 to South Beach Carmelo Hayes taking his talents to Dallas and looks forward to delivering uh, or to uh, defending his title in a ladder match at Stand and Deliver so there's uh, all my vamping I can do on NXT for right now do we have any update on uh, Montese alright here's the update so uh, Montese is going to be on the show Friday Friday. That's the plan now. And uh, we're getting a backup phone number, so worst case scenario, we'll call him! We're going to get him on the show in advance of the event coming up this Saturday night, so you guys can look forward to that on Friday. But uh, I only watched the first half of uh, NXT so far. I actually didn't even finish the entire show. I, uh, I made it all the way to the Gunta match. But uh, the, the notable thing about the show, I thought, 
was uh, they brought out Braun Breaker and Ciampa versus Ziggler and Root as the opener. And I was like, that's a match I'm most looking forward to. Why isn't this the main event? And then, to my utter shock and dismay, uh, Dolph Ziggler got pinned by Ciampa. I was just flabbergasted. I was like, you wasted all my time bringing Ziggler down to NXT, and you tease he's going to have a match with Braun Breaker, and you built this up for like three weeks, and then you build to a tag match, and Ciampa pinned Ziggler? What? Whatever. I mean, well, I mean, what's what's Dolph there to do though? I, mean, I thought he was there to have a championship match with Braun Breaker and help teach the guy how to work. Hey, look, I he's mean, still maybe can... he still will be. This is how they he's, book, yeah. but, but that, that's the thing. That's how they book. I mean, this is what they would do on the main roster, right? So it's really not not that far out of the realm of of possibility. Now, I just want to go back to something here since I'm getting hammered by Lance. Now, did I not say? That yes, he didn't tuck his chin, but there was nothing he could do from that height because he's killing me on me talking about wrestling technique, about tucking his chin and how ignorant I am. Look, sorry, I did say yes, he didn't tuck his chin, but there's nothing he could do from that height. But I'm not a wrestler, so you can talk about it with Brian on the show. It is all on Duke, okay? Okay. There you go. So Lance has got a lot of thoughts on this that he wants to get out, obviously, about that situation. So, and here's the thing with Duke Hudson. He's been around a long time, has he not? He's been around a lot longer than a lot of the NXT folk that they have on that roster, including the guy that he uh, he power bombed there. I just I just know that, like in the case of Duke Hudson, if you've been wrestling for a long time, I mean, I don't know. He, he had that I dude up way high and way again. Every everybody that saw it saw how high he was up, and how low he was, and how he bounced. So. Here's Again, the thing. I'm not a wrestler, so. Well, I am a wrestler, and here's my point. I hate moves where you can't take your own bump, where yeah. you have to literally put your whole life in someone else's hands. I hate moves like that. I never wanted to take them ever. And listen, Undertaker, they trusted Undertaker to do the tombstone. And uh, Undertaker never hurt anybody, even Hulk Hogan with his tombstone pile driver. So. If Duke Hudson was around the business forever and he could do this move and it worked every time and nobody ever got hurt, fine. Now, clearly that's not the case, by the way. So I think the move sucks. I think he needs a new move. But, uh, bro, why in God's name? The the, the one with uh, Lash, Lash Legend, this is on the, the people putting the show together. This is on the producers, okay? I don't know who was in charge of this or whatever. I don't know what trainer decided this would be a great move for her. But, like, you are to blame whoever came up with giving her this move. Because you know what? The opponent in Lash Legend's move cannot take their own bump. They're fully, it is all Lash Legend putting them down safely. Lash Legend's had, like, two matches. Don't give her a move like that for the love of God. That's their fault. Dude, you got an idiot proof. And I'm not saying Lash Legend is an idiot. It's a phrase. No, but, but she you hasn't have to done idiot yet. proof the matches yeah. for someone who's had two matches and given them a move that you got to be, you have to, ah. It's idiot, idiot proofing an offense for a quarterback that doesn't have any reps who you had to pull off because of COVID and you don't have your two quarterbacks. So you idiot proof an offense where they're throwing short passes. They're not making dumb mistakes. They're not being confused by the reads of the defense that they're going to. It's that simple. And again, why? Like again, it goes to, to with like Saray, and 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 I could be dead wrong about all this, but like those two working together as opposed to her and somebody else. I don't know. I mean, even Tiffany Stratton and Nikita Lyons. Nikita Lyons has had infinitely more experience. I mean, I know it's been. I guess the new glow and on indies and things like that. It's it's not like I know, you know, her history or anything, but at least she's got somewhere that may be to me more of a sensible matchup than it is putting her in there with Saray, who obviously, again, she does not seem to work in the way they want her to, you know, obviously she's coming around to the gimmick that they've given her and the, the school girl and the, 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 whatever it is, the, the necklace and the pendant and all that other stuff. But match wise, Again, I, I I don't. There's a lot with this show. Again, I, it's a. I'm not going to complain about watching the show, 
but it was a show that nobody's got to see. Nobody has to watch that show. You can watch the opening tag, and you can watch the main event, and everything else you can really literally skip in that whole match. And really, as you mentioned, it's not like they reinvented the wheel in the first match either. So if you just want to watch one good solid match, the best thing that came out of NXT, it was probably the the main event with Carmelo. The other, the other thing I want to mention here is that uh, a couple of people are saying Lash Legend shouldn't even be on TV. Well, you know, I'm not saying she should be on TV, but if if you're going to say that Lash Legend shouldn't be on TV, then like the show should be like 30 minutes because a lot of these people shouldn't be on TV. But here's the deal. I, I don't want to compare Lash Legend to, uh, you know, Clark Connors. But I'm going to. So uh, if you ever watch the uh, New Japan Young Lions system... I mean, they're really good, but you know what they have to do is they got to go out there and uh, they got to wear uh, black trunks and black boots and do only basic moves. They're not allowed to do anything flashy, okay? And uh, and granted, I'm not saying that Lash Legend needs to go out there in uh, black trunks and boots, but uh, you know, dress them up however you want, have them do their wacky ring entrance, superstar entrance, whatever. But once they get in that damn ring, they're young lions, and you don't do any difficult moves. It's all very, very basic wrestling and uh, crab finish, and that's it. And, like, if you can't do that, then you shouldn't be on television, okay? If you're competent enough to go out there, exchange some holds, do a simple move for the heat, do a very, very simple heat, which hopefully isn't all chin locks, but, I mean, I prefer that to someone getting hurt. A simple comeback, a simple finish. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be on television. If you can do that, that's all they should be doing, okay? For for their safety, for the safety of their opponents, and for their ability to learn how to do this. You're not going to learn how to do this being taught how to do crazy moves and uh, choreographed matches. You're not going to get any better at it. You're just going to get better at doing crazy, death-defying moves and and, uh, and choreographed matches. That's not working. I feel like Les Thatcher! Kill me. Uh, more John Morrison is going down. He's wrestling uh, Jack Cartwheel at uh, on Collective Weekend for GCW, and it's like, John Morrison, can you imagine all of the things that he could do and all the people that he could have helped in NXT and so many of the people that they released, that they let go, how these people, even if they're taking losses and laying on their backs for a lot of this new talent, how much it could help them along. And I just don't think they have enough of those people down there. And I, how, how they're doing it, we'll see if the results uh, work themselves out in a couple months to, to a couple years. We had to do a break, everybody. When we come back, we got the lineup for AEW tonight, and I'll briefly go over the Raw ratings, although they really don't matter all that much because uh, war is affecting all of these wrestling shows, except SmackDown for some reason. SmackDown viewers do not care about war. They only want to see their wrestling show. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. AW Tonight's got the Tony Khan announcement. The Hangman Page, Dark Order versus Adam Cole and Red Dragon match. Casino Battle Royal, because this Tony Khan loves him some Battle Royals. But a Casino Battle Royal, Casino Tag Team Battle Royal, I mean, theoretically, there should be a wild card, right? Are we going to have a new team? Or are we going to have a new entrance? What are we going to have? A debut? Britt Baker and Jimmy Hader versus Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez. And uh, that's announced for the show thus far. Raw Monday, uh, 1.75 million viewers and a uh, .47 tying Tucker Carlson for uh, first place of the top 23 19 were news shows. Uh, Raw viewers getting ready for daylight savings time here. 1.74 million viewers first hour, 1.84 million second hour. Dad, 1.69 million in the third hour. So that's the... That's a raw rating for you. Apparently those heel turns don't draw numbers. So we had two of them in the main event and it fell. But anyway, watch Dynamite tonight. We'll talk about it tomorrow, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio, Twitch homies, top tiers. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.